What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a shop my stash where I use nothing new. So all the products that I'm going to be using today are all products that I haven't really given a lot of love to in a while. I also brought you guys along with me as I went through my collection and chose all the products. So you'll get to see that as well. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy these types of videos and want to see more like it. That is always a really great way to let me know that you guys enjoy the video and then I We'll just continue to do more like them in the future. And of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already and want to join the fam. All right, now it's time to shop the collection. Please don't be alarmed by the mess. We're starting off with the makeup palette. So I am kind of feeling going very, very old school. For some reason, the Too Faced chocolate bar palettes came to mind. Oh my God, the Modern Renaissance palette. I have not played with this palette in the longest time. This is actually one of my favorites. Tarte, Tartlet in Bloom. This is another great old favorite of mine. I used to use this thing to absolute pieces. I just keep going back to the Modern Renaissance palette, so I think that's what we're gonna go with today. So I'm gonna put that aside. See you later. I really feel like I'm exposing myself um, pretty intensely right now. My collection is such a disaster. Let's just ignore that. So this drawer contains my bronzers, my highlighters, and my blushes. So let's go in first with my bronzers. I'm really looking for something that I haven't really used in a while. So I would love to rediscover some products. Oh my god, yes. The Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. This is definitely an old school favorite of mine. Oh my god, it's very difficult to open with one hand. There it is. I'm hoping this is going to be dark enough for me because I am a little bit more on the tan side, but I, I think I want to play with this today, so I'm going to Take this one out. Because the Tarte bronzer is on the matte side, I think I'm also going to include my Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light Bronzer. This is a gorgeous, glowy product. Looks like that. I love this. So this will be good to layer on top in case I want a little bit more glow. Now let's move on <laughs> to blush. So because I'm not exactly sure what kind of look I'm going to do, I'm thinking I want to play it somewhat safe and use a blush that's more on the neutral side. Oh my god, these Marc Jacobs blushes. So this Marc Jacobs blush in Lions and Last Night was one of my favorite blushes. Um, I used to use it all the time. I kind of forgot about it. Um, even though I did say I wanted to use more of a neutral blush, I think this is something that could be pretty versatile. So I'm going to pull this out and I'll pull out another option just in case. I see some... <laughs> MAC blush is down here. We have Mocha, which is a really pretty kind of plum shade. Then we have, what are you? Blush Baby. This one's really pretty too, actually. You know what? I think I'm going to grab Blush Baby. This is a great shade. It's kind of like a soft pink. Doesn't lean too bright or obnoxious. It's really, really muted. It's not quite a neutral blush, but I feel like this can go with a lot of different looks. Okay, now let's choose a highlighter. Ooh, oh my god, Too Faced Candlelight Glow. This is such a classic highlighter. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't this highlighter come out before the Becca highlighters came out? I feel like this was kind of one of the OG highlighters, so I think this would be a great one to play with. So now I'm moving on to foundation. I want to pull something that I haven't really used in a while. You know what I'm feeling? The Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. I do really like this because there's a lot of coverage to this, but you could also sheer it out, so it is pretty versatile. So we'll try that one out today. Okay, for primer, I'm actually gonna go with the Hourglass Number 28 Primer Serum because this works really, really well with the Vanish Stick. It kind of makes it a little bit more emollient, and I find that I'm able to work with it better when I use this primer. At least that's what I remember when I used to use this foundation all the time. So for concealer, because we're using the Vanish Stick and that's more of like a full coverage product, I want to use a concealer that is also a bit more on the full coverage side just so everything looks cohesive on the face. So I think I'm going to go with... Hmm. You know what? Let's play with the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. So for powder, I'm going to go with the Cover FX um, Illuminating Setting Powder. This used to be one of my favorites, but I do believe that they discontinued this product. So I think once they did discontinue this, I stopped using it because I don't love using discontinued products on my channel. But today, I make an exception. Okay, we're in the world of glitters and top coats right now. And so I kind of am feeling these Marc Jacobs top coats. This one over here is, this is one of the sequins in the shade um, Flashlight, and it's kind of like this 
white iridescent shade and I thought that this would be a good option to use because it would probably go with whatever eye look I decide to go with. So I think I'm gonna go with this guy. For my mascara, let's do the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. So for the lip product, I was initially not even going to choose one, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to force myself to work around a bold lipstick. I think that that could be really fun. Should I give myself like a purple option and really just make myself go crazy? Ooh, I think this is actually really, really pretty. This is the Fenty Stella Lip Paint in the shade Unattached. It's a really pretty bright coral. I think this will go with uh, the rest of our vibe nicely. Maybe not with this blush, but definitely with the Marc Jacobs one. All right, I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start off first with the face and I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer. I'm just gonna use my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base today just because this is sitting right next to me. So I'm just gonna take a nice little chunk of it <laughs> and massage it into my skin. To add a little extra hydration boost to my skin, I'm gonna go in with my Used to the People Adaptogen Soothe and Hydrated, no what? Nope, that's not, that's not what it's called. Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist. <laughs> Got a little too ahead of myself. So to prep my skin, of course, as you guys saw, I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Number no. 28 Primer Serum. This is probably one of the best hydrating primers out there. If you have incredibly dry skin and you wanna make more matte foundations work, this is a product that will allow those foundations to sit on your skin without them making your skin look incredibly dry and cakey. It's really such a game changer, especially for dry skin. The texture is definitely a little bit on like the oily side, but different than a typical, you know, face oil, it doesn't leave your skin feeling oily. It, it kind of gives your skin almost like a, a bit of a tacky finish, which will allow the foundation to adhere to the, to the face a little bit better. So now it's time to go in to the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. I'm using the shade Shell today, which is slightly concerning because this is definitely a little bit or a lot of it too light for me right now. I really want my skin to be flawless and perfected, but I don't want it to look heavy, so I am gonna use this with a sponge, and instead of drying this directly onto my face, which will definitely give me much more of like a heavier coverage, I'm gonna go in from the sponge to the stick to my face, and that way it will just keep a nice lightweight coverage, and I can just control it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna tap it mostly towards like the center of my face, and then blend outwards. You guys, why am I not liking the way this is looking? What's going on? This literally used to be my go-to favorite foundation, but for some reason, it's just looking a little bit dry on my skin right now. I don't know if, if I'm just having a really bad skin day, especially since I did apply the Hourglass 28 Primer Serum. That should have helped me avoid all of this, but yet, here we are. <laughs> I'm very confused. I'm hoping my skin is gonna warm up the foundation a little bit. So for the eyes today, we chose the Modern Renaissance Palette. I still stand by the opinion that this is one of the best neutral palettes, especially if you do enjoy warm tones. This has such beautiful shades in here. The pinks, the oranges especially, they're absolutely gorgeous. So today I'm kind of thinking of doing kind of like a, a winged out sunset eyeliner eye. Kind of hard to explain, I have this idea in my head. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to execute it. Wish me luck. I'm doing that because since I decided to go with a super bright lip, I wanna make sure that my eyes aren't gonna completely clash and I don't wanna do just like a basic neutral eye because I feel like that's just way too expected. So I'm gonna do something a little bit more subtle but still colorful on the eyes so that it doesn't overwhelm the crazy lip that we have. So I'm first gonna take the shade Tempera, which is the cream color in here. This is a really pretty cream because it has a slight sheen to it. It's not totally completely matte. So I always liked applying this all over my lid. I always found that it was a really nice brightening shade that did, didn't make my lids look chalky and weird. It's also gonna just brighten up my lids just a little bit. I'm gonna go into a teeny tiny little pencil brush. This is just a really random one from Nabla. It's called the Small Pencil. And I'm going to grab Love Letter, which is probably one of my favorite shades in the palette. I think it's probably a lot of people's because it's so gorgeous and bright. It's like a true raspberry. And so I'm gonna pick up a nice amount on the brush, tap off the excess, and just start to buff this across my lash line to start to create a little bit of a, a wing shape. 
So I'm almost even barely touching my eye right now because I really want this to be controlled. I don't want to create something too abrasive. <laughs> my plan is to kind of create this pretty smoked out pink and orange liner. And so the reason why I didn't apply my concealer yet is because I'm going to use the concealer later to clean up the edge of the shadow so that it's really nice and sharp. So that way right now, I could be as messy as I want. So this is exactly why I love the Modern Renaissance palette so much because the shades are so easy to work with. They are pigmented, they blend very, very easily. And I always felt like it was just such a great well-rounded palette. I'm just gonna take the back of my hand because I have nothing else near me and I'm just gonna wipe off the excess color that's on the brush and I'm gonna go into Real Girl, which is the orange over here. And I do still want a little bit of love letter on the brush because I feel like it's gonna help blend the two shades together. And I'm just going to blend the orange right above the pink to start to create a bit of like a, a gradient effect. Now this is the point where I don't know if this is gonna work out or not, so fingers crossed. When doing something like this, by the way, I highly recommend that you keep your eyes wide open because if you do it the entire time when you're like this and when you open up your eyes and everything is kind of covered, it really defeats the purpose. I'm focusing the orange more so on the outer half of my eye. I'm not bringing it all the way towards the inner corner. So now that I feel like I have like a good shape going on, I'm gonna go in with a bigger and fluffier brush. This is my Sigma Detail Diffuse Crease E33. And I'm just going to reapply just make sure that it that it looks smooth and even. Because sometimes if you do have any type of hooded eye situation going on, um, if you do apply straight straight on, when you go in like this, you may get some weird creases and it may look a little bit patchy. So this is the point where you kind of want to smooth that out. So now I'm gonna do something maybe a little bit unexpected. I'm actually gonna go into the blush that I plan on using and I'm gonna grab this little peach shade at the end over here because I think this is going to be a great shade to blend out Real Girl with. And since I don't have that in the palette, I'm going to use the blush. And I think that this is also going to be a great way to tie in the blush shade into the eye look. I actually do find that whenever I apply some blush into my crease or just incorporate it into my eye look, it just creates so much more of a cohesive look overall. Because this is a blush, this isn't like incredibly pigmented, but I don't really want it to be. I just want something to blend out the orange and I didn't want to use like a cream or anything. So this is actually working perfectly. So now it's time for the fun part. I'm gonna go in with a makeup wipe and I'm gonna clean up the outer corner of my eye. For whatever reason, this is always the part of my makeup routine that I always look forward to most because it's just so satisfying but I'm just gonna use this to clean up the outer edge and make sure it's nice and sharp. Okay, so now I am gonna go in to my concealer. So as you guys saw, I chose the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. Because this is such a heavy concealer, I don't wanna go in directly with the doe foot applicator underneath my eyes because I will over apply and you really don't need a lot with this product. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm just picking it up from the back of my hand with my beauty blender and just apply it that way. By the way, this concealer still is really nice. It's a great full coverage concealer. When you apply it sparingly like I did, it doesn't look too heavy. I'm gonna go in now with my um, Cover FX Illuminating Setting Powder. Um, I'm going to use this to set underneath my eyes. I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the powder and just press that underneath my eyes. I don't remember the last time I baked anything on my face but today I'm kind of feeling it. And now I'm gonna wipe it off. <laughs> With a very subtle bake. So for the under eyes, I kind of want to change it up. I was just going to go in with Love Letter and just kind of replicate what I did and blend it out with Real Girl, but I think I'm going to go in with Real Girl and maybe blend it out with Burnt Orange just to kind of create something a little bit more interesting. So I'm just going to blend that from the outer corner to the inner corner. I don't remember the last time I did a really, really warm, smoky eye like this. Okay, I'm going into Burnt Orange and using that to blend out the orange underneath my eyes. For my inner corner highlight, I'm gonna go into Vermeer, which is always such a beautiful highlight. 
then I'm gonna do this fun little technique that I've been doing by putting the highlight kind of like in the first quarter of your crease. I just really love the effect that it gives the eyes. It almost makes, makes the eyes look a little bit glossy. It kind of gives an interesting effect. I almost find it just adds like that little bit of extra dimension to the look, which I find really, really pretty. Almost forgot about our Marc Jacobs sequins in the shade Flashlight. This is actually gonna look gorgeous. I feel like right in the center of the lid, you are able to use this in a really opaque way to get something very intense, but you are also able to use something like this just with like a little bit of pressure to create more of a scattered glitter effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna swatch it on the back of my hand Holy crap, that is very reflective. So after kind of like warming it up almost in the back of my hand, I'm gonna pick it up from there and just dab it on the center of my lid. Oh, this is everything. Wow, this is a shade that quite literally makes your lids look wet. Okay, how have I not used this before? This is really beautiful. I feel like that just completely took the look to a whole nother level. I do feel like this look does call for a little bit of an inner eyeliner situation. So I'm gonna go in with Plum from Persona. This is actually very pretty because even though this is a plum color, it leans more brown. So it's not in your face purple, but it does have that little bit of that purple undertone. And I feel like it's just gonna really go well with the colorful theme that we have going on on the eyes already. So I'm gonna line the inner rim. Okay, gonna coat my lashes with my CoverGirl Exhibitionist. I really am so happy with how these eyes turned out. It's so different than anything I think I've ever done. Okay, so now it's time to bronze, so I'm gonna go into my Tarte Program New Princess. I was actually a little bit nervous that this wasn't gonna work with my skin tone right now because like I said, I am a little bit more tan. I think the lighter foundation probably helps a little bit, <laughs> but I forgot how beautiful this bronzer was. It really does warm up the skin really nicely, but it doesn't lean to orange at all. This is very pretty, it looks very natural looking. Okay, I still am gonna put a light dusting though of the Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light. This is one of my all-time favorite bronzers. I feel like I don't talk about it enough, honestly. It really just gives your skin a gorgeous golden glow. Look at that sheen that it has. But because obviously it's an hourglass powder, it's not gonna look overdone or too crazy. Hourglass is pretty much the queen of creating products that are never over the top or obnoxious. They kind of just give you just enough. I'm kind of just like putting a nice layer on top of the Tarte bronzer. And look at the nice warmth that it gave my cheeks. I love that. So now I'm gonna highlight my skin with my Too Faced Candlelight Glow. This is a little duo with two different highlighters. You have like more of a pinkier one and then kind of like a champagne color. I think today I'm going to, you know what? I'm just gonna mix the two together. This brush had black on it. It's okay, it's okay everybody, everything's fine. I'm just taking my beauty blender and I'm tapping over it and it seemed to have fixed the issue. Whew. Okay, going into a brush that does not have black eyeshadow on it and we're gonna try that again. There we go, that is much better. I have almost exclusively been using cream highlighter so every time I put on a powder one, I just don't love the way it looks. I always find that it just makes my skin look so incredibly textured, which is very frustrating because cream highlighters I don't really find tend to do that. And so when I first initially applied that highlighter, I felt like it looked so intense and really unflattering on my cheeks, especially because I have so much texture on them right now. But after going over it with my beauty blender and kind of pushing it into the skin, I feel like it looks a lot better. It's not as crazy metallic. It almost looks like a cream. Kind of. The reason why I actually decided to go in with my highlighter first before my blush is because I find that with powder highlighters especially, um, when you put your blush on top of the highlighter rather than the opposite, putting your highlighter as the last step, I find it kind of blends the highlighter a little bit more into the skin so it doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of it. So that was purposeful. So we are gonna be going in with the Marc Jacobs Air Blush Blush in Lines and Last Night. Same color that we used on the eyes. It's a nice peachy shade. I'm going to apply this higher than I normally would. I'm actually going to avoid my apples. Just mostly apply it on my cheekbone area. I feel like because the eyes have such a lifted effect, I feel like this is a blush placement that would better suit it. 
so it also lifts the face with it. So I'm just gonna quickly do my brows off camera and I'll be back to finish off this look with the lips. I figured I would show you guys two different lip options just because why not? Um, I'm gonna show you a nude lip option and then I will show you the bright lip option and I want you guys to let me know in the comments which one you prefer. So I'm first gonna do the nude lip option. I'm gonna go in first with my Make It Forever Artist Color Pencil in Endless Cacao. This is one of my favorite contour lip pencils. It kind of leans a little bit scary and gray, but once you blend it out, it literally looks like a shadow and it just does a really, really good job of making your lips look bigger. I'm just making sure, especially with the color like this, that I'm blending it because otherwise it could look a little bit crazy. I'm feeling something very matte today, which is very unlike me. I'm gonna be using these two guys and mix them together. They're both from MAC. They're the Powder Kiss Lipstick in A Little Tamed and Influentially, Influentially, Influentially It. What a weirdly difficult word to say. So I'm just gonna go in with the coral shade. And I kind of just wanna like, pat it on my lips just to add a little bit of color. Again, I feel like this is just gonna tie in the eyes and the cheeks really, really nicely. And then to give the lips a little bit more of like a nude pop, I'm gonna go in with the lighter nude shade. You now I'm just gonna layer this on top of the whole lip. On its own, this would just be way too light. So I feel like mixing the two just gives the perfect nude Coral. I'm actually really, really, really into this lip option. I think it's super pretty. So this is lip option number one. Now let's go into the bright lip, which is what we chose initially. So I'm gonna take this off begrudgingly because I really love it. I may even put it on after. <laughs> okay, so now we're going into Fenty Unattached, which is this really fun bright coral. Do I love this more? Kind of. Wow, what an unexpected turn of events. I did not think I was going to like the brighter lip more. I actually thought that I would probably hate it, but I kind of feel like this lip just really pulls every single aspect of this look together. Let me know though what you guys think in the comments. What do you think looks the best? All right guys, I hope you enjoyed today's look. As per usual, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video and wanna see more and subscribe if you are not subscribed already and wanna join the fam and I'll see you guys in the next one.